So in the flash of an eye, we're back. All right. Flash or blink? More like a blink of an eye. Flash of a light, maybe. Uh, so this is our new short block. This is our old one. Can't stress this enough. Always make sure whenever you have parts that you're going to replace that you look at them to make sure they look the same. And uh, that just, I've been burnt so many times, you know. Wow. Yeah, you can feel the difference in compression. Can you hear that? Yeah. Well, actually, that's not a good test because there's no spark plug in there. But here's the part number information. And it's, uh, it's about $70 for it. But we got ourselves a new short block. So let's go ahead and put that back together and test it. We'll pull this apart some more so you can see the carnage. I'll get that off. All right, we need to get this magneto off. And uh, it's, a, it's a T20. These need to be tapped. Interesting. There's no threads. Oh, boy. Got it, got it. Yep. So, this has threads here, and this does not. So, these are self tapping. So, before we go ahead and like go crazy with the uh, torque, all right, let's do this. Let's go ahead and get this air gap between the magnet on the flywheel here. We're going to use this gasket here. Let's put that there. Let's just test it. Let's see if it spins without collision. Okay, we're good. All right. So we need to um, lubricate the cylinder wall just to make sure we give it a fighting chance because it's brand new. Looks like Hulk. The spark plug has the assembly line. Somebody was having a bad day. Pretty sure you don't need that much torque. This is a Champion QDJ7J, if you want to know. That's what the manufacturer sent it with. So it's going to pour a little Marvel Mystery Oil in here. Move it around. Don't want to lubricate the uh, the cylinder cylinder top end jug, whatever you want to call it. And then we'll just kind of like. Turn it around. Just get it to just, just coat the walls. Cool. You don't need too much, just just enough to get it so it doesn't sound too scrapey.
So we just kind of like need to get some uh, parts. Just transfer them, you know. By the way, this is not tapped, so this has no threads. The new one, so we need to we need to thread it. I mean, tap it, and uh, this exhaust here. I got these two long. Screws that go into this. Like that. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and slide this on. Do this by hand. Because. Slide it on like this. This is the T these are T twenty sevens, so yeah, we're gonna these are self tapping, so they're gonna make their own threads. Careful, don't use any power tools only because you can't really control the torque. Might want to switch to a socket. Yeah. So this handle has four bigger threaded screws with the flat tip like that. And those are T25s. This I'm trying to get this all worked out right here. So like that. And we have this thing here. I was, I was messing around with it. It goes like this. I had it. I thought it came out. I thought it was like that. But it's not. It's, it's down. It's down. There's a groove right here too. So that kind of tells you. There's a groove right in the plastic right there. Right. Okay. I need the body to kind of clamp down on it. Um, yeah, it's like this.
So I had to watch my own video. Okay. See those? Pay attention. They're very different from the other two. Are these are looks like they have the threads a little bit the pitch is much larger. These go into the metal and they have the lock washer and the washer, right? And you see the head is different. That's what makes it different also. The head is different. So those are the ones that we're going to use for the carburetor bracket. And um, yeah, so we got we have to make start those. Just gotta get the bracket, I got brackets back. There's a gasket that goes all the way inside of there. And also don't lose that nut. I was wondering what what, what that sound was. Uh, why, why, why? Uh, but okay, so there's two nuts back here that sit inside of there, like that. I have a weird feeling I lost one, so I think I heard it fall. Yeah, so I'm gonna spend some time looking for that. Yeah, I'm gonna spend some time looking for that. Because that's kind of important. It won't, it won't hold rats. Right in. All right, this is a little bit of a pain. <clears throat> that is what I had to get. And uh, those lock nuts, uh, they were the thick enough. And they were the ones that allowed me to kind of like slide that in there. Let's see, right here at the top. And then, um, yeah, it was a pain in the butt. Just really difficult. Okay. So, remember, we gotta tap that ourselves, so. Okay, so we're gonna go in like that. We got these two here. On closer inspection, there's really no way to get this wrong because the other there's there are other there are four others that look like this, but they are it's four of them they, they look different, you know, similar but not the same. So, in other words, it's it's difficult to mess it up because those four obviously belong to something else, you know. So. Either way, here we go. What if I didn't just machine the threads? Obviously, it's, a, it's an economic argument, you know? It's usually what happens. Money makes the decision. Disassemble, disassembly is a little different from the reassembly, um, only because I wasn't sure what went where. But there are things that we can put on. So remember, this part here has. Sorry, see that gap right there? I think that's going to go around the spark plug. And then this wire here will come around through right there, right here, okay. So, so there's a pattern to this. Um, it's just you have to make all the threads yourself, so. Yep, nothing comes threaded. Okay, so we have four of those into metal that we have to screw in. They look like this. Uh, I 
thought it was the ones with the uh, washer on them, but that's, that's for something else. We'll find out when we cross that bridge. Let's double check and make sure everything is nice and flat. Everything's bulging up. Okay, we're good. Okay, it's getting them started and then I'll uh, really tighten down as we get a little closer. Again, no power tools, just because you want to kind of get a feel for how much is too much, and if you bottomed out, and then how much more to go, you know. I'm really excited! I am um, taking the steps to really get into component level repair, and. Uh, Got some really nice, you know, watch me learn how to not fuck shit up. Oops, sorry. <laughs> watch me learn how to not break things. Or break things less. But the thing about the component level repair, it's like really important to know how to do it. Because so much of the automotive things that I'm running into, right? Like little components failing. Especially when you have an older car like my uh, like my Honda, what's happening is uh, particularly with a speedometer, not this yeah, the speedometer inside the car is that it constantly fails, and uh, it's like it's not like when it's gonna fail. It's just it's not even how. It's just more like when you know it's always going to fail. It doesn't matter. What part you got? But this thing is always failing, and the only way to like kind of really solve it is to be able to repair it on a component level. So, some of you have seen the uh, the video. There's two videos of me fixing the uh, speedometer and diagnosing it. Both pretty good video to complement each other, and. Uh, one is to actually test the vehicle speed sensor, and the other one will uh, show you how to diagnose it. Well, either way, we're right back to the situation we're at right now where the uh, speedometer just doesn't seem to work anymore. My thing is, I think we should probably deal with these lines, these fuel lines first, right? So this is their return. This is the intake. So this returns a little busted up. I'm thinking we can probably cut a little bit off of here. It's getting a little on the brittle side. But it is it's okay, you know. Let me cut a little bit off of here. And I'm thinking maybe we can kind of handle this before it gets too bad. Either way, uh, I do have fuel lines for it. We can just see if we can get away with this for now. Okay, so let's slide this on. that are just the plastic ones. These, there's a whole bunch of them. They all just go into plastics. They're all like T20s. Yeah. So be careful, don't over torque. All right, so they're not all the same. Um, Look here, let me show you. Alright, so these two, the. Notice that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, this is a pointy one. That one there. Well, these pointy ones are the ones that we want for that. Not these flatter ones. So find pointy ones. This one feels a lot easier than the others. Why is that? And we'll finish it off by hand. Yeah, this thing is it's gonna happen in like four years from now and this plastic is brittle. None of those things will stay. Nothing's built to last. Nothing. What can we do here? Remember that? This thing is a pain in my butt. It's driving me nuts. It's a little groove right here. I'll get the wires down in there. There's another one right here. And then it comes through, feeds through the handle right there. So groove, groove handle, and then the, this thing here sits right in there. Then we have on and off switch. Now you saw that coming, didn't you? Okay. So we got that like that. Make sure everything is in place. Okay, wires not getting clipped. Alright. It's down. Hilarious, those are the same nuts that I bought right there. See that? That's cool. How funny is that? Right, so now we got four. I think these four here are just generic plastic ones? Well, we don't know. Let's find out. You can now use four the generic regular um, screw into plastic uh, fasteners here. Now these are T25s. Those two right there. Don't get them confused with this longer one. This longer one's for the carburetor. Okay, let's go through here. Fuel tank should have two of these, the same plastic -y ones, generic plastic ones. With Alright, so we're going to put this carburetor back on, right? You see that little sp space right here? This groove? There's an O-ring that goes inside of there. 
and uh, it's a separate piece, but it's kind of stuck to this because it's just, you know, time. And so this goes down in here. Make sure you uh, get that hole open like that. When I say hole, I mean uh, this hole right here needs to breathe. It's, uh, okay, so we're good. Right. Then we get the carburetor. Remember the green line is going to be closest to the body of the machine. That's the return line. And then this part here holds the air filter like this. Okay. Let's go ahead and put the uh, screws in to help hold the carburetor into place. And you'll see the reason why, you know, I was so neurotic about getting the some skirt that fits in there, it's because you can't really risk not having this be able to, uh, you know, tighten down. So you gotta have the ability to really, like, squeeze this together because you don't want any air to leak into the engine that's going to ruin the performance of the engine that's why you got to have that bolt and so let's go green line closest to the body of the uh, machine black line now again we're just banking on this carburetor not being an issue either we'll find out right won't we okay so we got to get the is your fuel filter right here. All right, I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. Good. You have an air filter here? Don't forget. Nope, not, <laughs> not so soon. We gotta get this here. Tuck that in, I remember that, yeah. Tuck that in. That will, that has to go into here. Because so, we need to get that carburetor hooked on, so we want to hook it on first. Like here. This is the uh, linkage, so it's going to go into the throttle, right, like that, and then I just want to push that down into there, like that. This wire goes here, right there. Yeah, just, sorry, just pull on that, make sure you're getting Feels a little sticky. That's not too bad. Okay. All right. So this is it. This is all we need to do for now. We're not to put anything else on. We need to also put the spark plug on. Yeah. But we can test it now. You know, we can actually take it out. Side and give it a good test. Yeah. All right. So that's it. See if that works. Forty to one is the fuel ratio to oil. Yeah. Let's just uh, give it a give it a test. So let's test for spark. So we have the spark plug boot out. And this is a good idea to do before we, uh, you know, just kind of 
go and try to start this thing and unsure why it's not started. Okay, so look right there. Let's see if we see any spark. This is always in the on position. This is the spark arrest. Let's see what we get. Yep, we got spark. We're good. So here's really the test we want to conduct. We want to see if uh, this carburetor is going to work or not. Remember, this uses 41. We're going to give it the good stuff. I think that should be enough just to test. Look at the primer bulb here. See if you can, uh, so let's see if it's gonna actually pump, suck. Yep, stuff is happening. I can end fuel. Let's fuel in, fuel out. I might need to pour a little bit more fuel. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was just too tilted back. So it's all filled up right now. So I have a, a strong feeling that that's going to work. Um, we'll give it a little bit more fuel. test it. What do you think? It's going to be uh, pretty close to where it needs to be? Or we're going to have to like putz around with it for a while. What do you think? Taking bets. Right, so I just kind of caught something. So if you look right here, right? Right here. So that's the idle screw. That screw right there needs to touch this right here. Right. But if you look at it, it never makes it back to the screw. So it's not getting a full range of motion. I mean, it's already like throttled up really high, and it's just supposed to be its neutral position. So we had to figure that out before we proceed. Yeah. Right, so kind of pull this apart so we can look at it together. I want to show you what I found. It's more like a technician error. So this needs to be right here. That little groove. Because I need the extra range of motion. Turn this one hand. In this right here. See so when it's when it's when it's down like that, right? This needs to be loose so I can get the extra cable. So I think I just had it like here on this side, you know, so anchor it like that. There's grooves, you can't miss it. And that should, that should do it. Put it back together, I'll give it a try. You're gonna need two tools to adjust this. You're gonna need a D-spline, single D. You're gonna need a flathead or Phillips screwdriver. Alright, let's do it. So it's already primed. Choke on. To a good start.
never, the cable never really gets all the way back to our nice resting position. It's always kind of like, yeah, I never really, the same problem we, Cable is a bit of an issue, and I don't know what to do. Can't really get any more length out of it, to my current knowledge. All right, well, uh, let me think about it for a second. So I roughly have an idea to get more length out of this. So, you know, when this kind of circles back like that, right? It bumps up against this stopper here. So in my mind, right, why not just kind of like cut back the sheath on the cable, if possible. There we go. I think this is exactly why the engine failed, because the, uh, this thing was always like probably fully maxed out when you start it. Yeah, I think that's what it, what it was. It's just fully maxed out when you start it. And then, uh, and then you have, uh, the engine needs to actually like kind of ramp up in temperature. For the thermal expansion of the piston and the cylinder. I'm trying to give this person a, you know, the benefit of the doubt, but with that being said, then because it's always idling so high, it, it starts off with such high RPMs, you end up with uh, an engine that's just totally going to overheat and expand. I mean, overheat's going to expand too quickly and, uh, you know how that goes. All right, so I think I think we got to cut this back. I just don't know if this is like one piece that's in there, or you know, I kind of twisted this, spun this off like it was screwed on. Don't even know if that's right. All right, let me think about it for a sec. So I still have a problem, right? Because uh, I want more wire to poke through. In other words, I want this to slide back more. But to do that, I need to cut this metal sleeve back. Yeah, without cutting the throttle cable wire itself. Hmm. Looks like a job for the Dremel. I only need about... Man, I don't even know how much that is. Very little. Let me see. Uh, I only need a small amount. So it's a...
two eighths of an inch. Yeah. So I'm just gonna mark this so I can have a an idea how much I want to cut. Because once I cut it, I can't get it back. And I don't need a lot. I just need a small, small amount. You know. Get your glasses and be very careful because if you cut that wire, you're going to need a new cable. And hopefully, the new cable will be the right length, but all bits are off. Hmm. It feels awkward. Other thing, whenever it feels awkward, don't do it. It's because you. Your brain is not in the right position, you know. What I'm doing is just I'm pulling the uh, cord away from the edge, the side that I'm cutting on. See if I can break that off now, you know. Oh, let's see what we got there. Mostly. Yep, it's good. Yes. Okay. I forgot the what do I do when I do get it off? Hmm. I need to cut it down some so that way. <laughs> Before I pull it all the way off, let me uh, make a slice in it so I, I can get it off, off. Don't want to touch that wire. It's already falling apart on me there. Get out of there. Where's your pick when you need it? Darn it. Okay, we have these little pieces off there. Alright, so I think that should be enough for us to get this further in, you know? I think that'll work. So, screw that in. And then we'll uh, try it again, put it back together. All right, this thing has been a real big pita. And uh, I can't get it in, it just won't screw down, right? So, 
what I'm gonna do now, right? It's kind of like it's kind of like uh, do or die. Got nothing to lose. So I'm, I'm gonna heat this up, push this in. Because I really, really can't screw this in. So come on. All the way. All the way. Come on. Okay, so that there is as much as we're gonna get using what we the technique we just did. Hopefully, that's enough. It's definitely longer already. I can see that. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna work. It's definitely going to work. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Finally. Whoa. Okay, it works. Doesn't doesn't rebound back well. Hmm. But it touches. It's a little stiff coming back. So, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna think about this. So, my thoughts are maybe we can kind of oil this. It's binding up inside of here somewhere. And. It's really. Not able to, the spring on the carburetor can't pull it back. So, yeah, that's where we are. Okay, so I got it to work. I had to take this off again and unscrew it. There was a little piece of plastic in it, it was causing it to bind up. And there it is. So now it's rebounded as it's supposed to, as it was designed, just like factory. See, it goes all the way down and it hits the uh, idle screw so you can actually really adjust it if you need to. The throttle, so if you look here, max throttle, it's pretty much all the way. There's not much more we can get out of that. So it's getting all the way open. I'm sorry, there's no more you can get out of it. It's all the way open and it's all the way closed now. All right, round two, fight. Okay, here we go. So, choke. Just the uh, low speed. Turn the high side. Sorry, high side can't go in anymore. Turn the low side to the right. Turn the low side clockwise.
I'm happy with that. That's awesome. Okay, so that throttle cable worked out well. We have really responsive engine. Um, let's go ahead and put it back together and uh, do a little cleaning. Well, 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 looks like we're at the end of this video. Um, stick around, we've got some bonus footage. You can see right here, the, we already knew this was gonna happen, you know? You can hear it at the end of the video. But uh, see all the rubbing right here? The, this is, remember it just didn't have enough fasteners when we first took it off, like they, they dropped it or something and broke it. And then what happened was uh, it just went like that. And that was the end of it. And, uh, yeah, there's no uh, need to get a new housing like this. And uh, this part also needs to be replaced. I can get away with uh, I can get away with it to a degree. There's like uh, yeah, there's like four. Yeah, one missing, missing. Two, three. That's enough, you know, to get this to work the way we need it to. But this one I can't get away with. So, either way, hey, listen, 
fun project. Pretty easy. Parts are easy to get for this one. And uh, hope you learned something. It was a lot of fun for me. And thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. All right. Don't yeah, forget thumbs up, thumbs down, comment if you saw something that we could have done better. And uh, try to keep things out of the junkyard, right? Or trash, because they're very fixable. Bye. Good job on the man orgasm. Come on, man orgasm. That's your piston. damage right there. So that right there. See all those the scratches? Yeah that's not gonna work. It's gonna leak air right past the top so you can't get any compression. So useless. In here marks yeah it's just scratched up the wall is just destroyed so there you go that's why I wouldn't wouldn't give you any compression and, and that was on the um it's on the exhaust side so it's a typical failure I've seen it many times when it gets hot hot air you know exhaust blowing out just the thermal expansion. It's really important that you let these engines warm up before you just go ahead and hit it hard on a throttle. You know, a lot of people just, I've even seen professionals just go ahead and just hit it hard when they just start it. It's like you gotta wait. Because remember, this is going to get a little wider along with this. Now, the velocity at which they get wide will change because of the mass, you know? So different mass, different types of material composition. So 
what ends up happening is that if this thermally expands faster than this, it's going to expand and scratch the inside of this uh, piston. I mean, of the, uh, the the cylinder head. So just be careful. All right, we'll try at least. We got some extra bolts, so we'll put these in the hoard because we know we'll need them at some point. 